Hi everyone, so we're looking at APs, this is the, I think it's the third bit. So I started making loads of mistakes in the second bit. So I'm taking myself off, have a little break, and let's see if we can kind of get through it without making any mistakes. Uh, let's move that over a little bit. So that's that's a, a one for you to go off. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> right, next page. Right, let's go example four then. So it tells us the fifth term in AP is two. So I know that u5 is two, and that's what I need to find. And it tells us the eleventh term is minus fifteen. So u11, sorry, minus thirty. So that's what it ends in 11. Now these are all the terms that are there. So I've got to use the terms. So I'm using un is a plus n minus 1 d. Right then, so for this first one, 2 is a plus 5 minus 1, and that's a d. So 2 is a plus 4 d. For this one, minus 13 is a plus 11 minus 1d, so minus 13 is a plus 10d. Now I can solve these simultaneously, and that will give me an a value of 12 and a d value of minus 2 and a half. From there, I might be asked to find another fifth term. Right, this question for you. Uh, it tells you that the third term is 20 and the seventh term is 12. If you can find A and B, then it wants you to do something with it. Please pause it, have a go with it, don't just copy it. Right then. So the next bit says the sum of the first two terms is 18. So I know that S. 2 is 18 when n is 2. And I know that the sum of the first four terms is 52. So sum 4 is 52. I hope the lights have gone off. It's 52 when n is 4. So I can use this information to find the A and the D, and then I can find the sum of the first A. So I'm going to find A and D first. So my sum equation is N over 2, 2A plus N minus 1D. So the sum equations you're given, the term equations you know. So what I've got here, so I've got 18 is 2 over 2, 2A, plus 2 minus 1d. So 18 is 2a plus d. That's all right, isn't it? Uh, let's have a look at this one then. So 52 is 4 over 2, 2a plus 4 minus 1 lots of d. So 52 is 2, 2a plus 3d. So 26 is 2a plus 3d. There, if I solve these two simultaneously, it gives me a is 7 and d is 4. I think if I've read the right one. Now it wants the sum of the first eight terms. So the sum of the first eight terms is 8 over 2, 2 lots of 7, plus 8 minus 1, lots of 4. Uh, what's that going to give us then? Apparently, 168. I don't quite trust my own working out. 168. There you go. That's quite nice, that question. I like that. There. Right. I think this is the last little bit, I think, for the, the lesson. Yeah, there's a couple of examples here. It's about using sigma notation. So what this wants is the sum of the first 100 terms. So what I do is I get the first three terms out and then I can work out what my A and my D are. 
So I've got Jack the first three. Jack. Those three terms. And I can work out A and D. I mean, the first two terms do it, but you don't know if it's an A or a G paper. So, if I put 1 in, I've got 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. If I put 2 in, I've got 3 times 2 plus 1 is 7. If I put 3 in, I've got 3 times 3 plus 1 is 10. And that keeps on going. So that should tell me then, for my AP, that A is 4 and D is 3. Because A is my start value of 4 and D is what it's going up in. So if I want the first 100, and I want the sum of it, I'm doing the sum to n is n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1d, which you get used to using because you use it so much. So the sum of the first 100 is 100 over 2, 2 lots of 4, plus 100 minus 1 lots of 3. Is that right? Put my numbers in the right place. N is 100, A is 4, D is 3. And that gives me 1, 5, 2, 5, 0. So there's one there for you. So I'm going to work out the first three terms, hopefully. And then that tells me that A is 3 and D is 5. And then I can work it out. You don't stand there being a bit sneaky. I'm doing 50 minus 1. So I'm using the formula. Right, there's another example on the next page. Hang on. So I hope that's okay. That's quite straightforward. Whew. All right, okay. Right then. So we've got to show up that the sum's that. What? Right then. So if I put n in as 1, I've got 2n over 2. How are they going to do that then? So for n in as 1, I've got 2 over 2 is 1. Put, they've got, oh, got like a, they've got the numbers up right here, haven't they? If I put 2 in, I end up with 2 out. Uh, I don't like the way they've done this one. Hang on. Ugh, oh, you donkey. I was looking at the right hand. Look at that there. So I'm looking from R is 1 to N. So if I put 1 in, I get 1 out. If I put 2 in, I get 2 out. If I put 3 in, I get 3 out. So, what that's telling me is A is my first one, B is my adding on of 1, and N is 1. So I was looking at that bit, putting in there, but the, the values are different. It wants me to work out the sum of R and then see if it gets there. This is the answer that I'm aiming towards. So the layout of the question just uh, messes with my head a little bit there. So if I put R as 1 in, R as 2 is R as 3. It's going up in 1s. So UN, so I'm going to sum down to so SN, N over 2, 2A two plus N minus 1D. N is N is N. So sum to N is N over 2, 2 lots of 1 plus N minus 1 lots of 1. So N over 2, 2 plus N minus 1. So that gives me N over 2, N plus 1, which is what it wanted in the first place. So, we kind of see that, so we worked out this bit on the left, and it gave us A as 1 and D as 1, and N as N. Yeah, it's random on that one. Luckily we're out of time. Wow. Right, so we're going to work on consolidation exercise 1 in the lesson. Well done, everyone.